Alright you guys, what is going on and welcome back to the channel. We are like a video away from being able to start the STI and I'm pumped. So we have the downpipe, the header, everything else needed to get the car pretty much started at this point aside from a couple fluids I have to go pick up from Subaru and some other stuff. Some other like hoses, random small stuff here and there. So the game plan for today is I also got the wheel spacers in and the turbo blanket. So I want to get the wheel spacers on first just to kind of get that out of the way. Uh, plus it'll just make the car look a little bit better. So I just snagged some Torque Solutions 20 mil wheel spacers. They'll get the job done. They'll do exactly what we need them to. As for the downpipe, I'll walk you guys through that. You, are, you guys already know what header we got also and you can't go wrong with Killer B. So here we have it. We have a Grim Speed Limited. It's not even the Limited. It's just a Grim Speed downpipe. This is really all that we needed. Uh, we have our Killer B header. We've got two boxes of Torque Solutions 20 millimeter wheel spacers, a PTP turbo blanket, and a new AFR sensor for our air fuel ratio gauge in the blob eye. All right, wheel spacers are on, and I must say, they do sit a lot more flush with the fender now. Very happy with that. Uh, they are the Torque Solutions one. All you gotta do is torque them down to 80 foot pounds, then torque the wheel to the wheel spacer, 80 foot pounds. These should be totally fine. They shouldn't put excessive stress on the wheel bearings or anything like that. Um, so pretty happy with the outcome of this. They look solid. They look beautiful. Very happy with that. I have no idea how like how low we're gonna be because, well, the goal is to get the car off jack stands tonight. So hopefully we're able to meet that goal. But I did get the hot side piping off also. So now we are ready to throw the downpipe on. I already have a new gasket set on there. So when it comes to installing downpipes, super simple. Get this side mated up to the turbo first, get the little hanger right there, put onto the transmission mount, and then get it bolted up to the exhaust. And that's really it. It's not not nearly as bad as people make it out to be. With an external wastegate, it can be a little bit annoying since we do have a dump tube and a wastegate down there right in our way, but it shouldn't be anything too bad. So, uh, I'm not looking forward to that one. But once we get this in, we can get the intake back in because we need to be able to, well, obviously I'd take out the hot side piping. So once we get that back in, then we can get the intake back in. And that's pretty much it for the engine bay with the exception of the AOS finish up, but let's get this downpipe in. Downpipe is installed relatively easily. I did unbolt the AOS just so I can move it around a little bit. Uh, all five bolts on the downpipe are on there. Really not as bad as people think it is to swap downpipes on these cars. It can be a little bit annoying at times, but even with the external wastegate, it's very manageable. You just gotta finoodle your fingers up there to be able to get past the dump tube to be able to put the five bolts on, but they are all tightened down. Next up, we're gonna keep focusing on that downpipe for a minute. We have a new AFR sensor or a wideband sensor for our AEM gauge, and then we have our PTP turbo blanket that we got to throw on. So this one I lost, well actually I sacrificed the old sensor for the BRZ and we also need a turbo blanket on here. The turbo blanket's gonna suck because there's just a ton of stuff in the way, but it shouldn't be too bad maybe. I don't know, let's get it on here. Let me tell you guys, putting a turbo blanket on is god awful to do with an air oil separator in the car and all of those hoses. It just sucks. It sucks to put turbo blankets in with like everything up in the car still, but it is in. I ended up using safety wire just because I have one of the springs. I just, I, there's no way I couldn't do it. And the spring kept like bending on me and turning into like a J instead of like an actual hook. So uh, turbo blankets in and the new wideband sensor is in. So now we can actually fully reassemble the engine bay for the most part. So I'm gonna get this hot side piping back in, the intake in, the air box. Uh, I'm gonna leave off the snorkel for now just because we have these coolant fittings that I need to get line for and that coolant fitting still. But like, it's, oh, it's so close. I just wanna see it with like the intake back in. We're like right there. We're like right there, you guys. We still have to get that header in, which I'm probably gonna have Melanie help me because the up pipe always gets in the way. Uh, but that's all right, let's focus on this first. Thank you. 
Yo, it actually looks almost like a like a whole car again. The only thing we're missing is the header over there, but this air box, getting this thing in sucks. Like it doesn't, it did not want to line up right, but I mean, I finoodled it in there. Uh, this guy needs to come back out, but I just have it temporarily mocked up just to be able to look at the engine bay and say, wow, it's almost complete. The last couple of things that need to be done up here are these coolant lights need to go up to the radiator. This guy needs to go over here to our reservoir and we need to cap that guy off and then do a Y for the AOS and throw the header on obviously. And then we can fill it up with fluid and start it you guys. But we're gonna resume this video tomorrow because I need to go run to Subaru to pick up some power steering fluid and a couple other small errands. So I'll see you guys bright and early in the morning. Oh wow, I am like way too zoomed in, there we go. All right, so it is the next day yet again. These projects are just bleeding over from day to day to day to day to day. It's all good though. We're gonna be working on this still continuously. I need to get the header put on there while I'm putting the header on. Matt, I've recruited Matthew to help out also. So while I'm getting the header on, Matt's gonna clean up a couple things up in the engine bay. Uh, there's a little bit of trimming that I need to do underneath the car on the front core support to get the header to clear a little bit cleaner. Uh, I know it'll clear, I can make it clear without doing any trimming or beading or hammering or that kind of stuff, but just to make fitment a little bit better, let me show you what we're gonna be like cleaning up. Underneath the car, there's like this lip right here for the front core support. Now, I'm either gonna trim it with an angle grinder or I'm gonna beat it with a hammer just to get the lip to either bend up or cut it a little bit just to get clearance a little bit cleaner for the header. Like, it's close, but I think it would clear anyways. But just to be sure, like when I talked to Chris down at Surge Line, he said a lot of people do that trimming anyways. So I'm probably gonna trim it up a little bit. And this front subframe just looks like it's been beat on. Who jacks up the car right there? It's not where you jack up a car or it's been hit on the ground a lot. Like maybe I need to replace the subframe at some point, but not quite yet. So while I'm doing that, Matt's going to be up here. Uh, we have an OEM battery terminal to swap on here because this one is pretty trash and I did electrocute myself yesterday with the battery. Uh, that really wakes you up in the morning. Uh, the LF bypass valve, the hose down there needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Uh, and then a temporary hose needs to be ran from the turbo inlet up just, just up to the AOS. Uh, then we need to figure out these radiator lines as well. And that one also, we need to go to Lowe's and get a 90 NPT for that, just to connect it to that. But it's progress. So. I'll hop under the car, I'll start doing some cutting. You hop up here and we'll just do all the stuff. All the stuff. So we have a lot of the stuff kind of cleaned up at this point. The radiator is hooked back up to the upper coolant expansion tank. Matt did get the new battery terminal on and we do have power from the battery at this point. We have the temporary routing for the AOS hooked up right now. And the, I mean, we tried to fix the bypass valve. There's like a small kink in the line down there. It looks like we're gonna have to get like an OEM line. And then while I was under the car, I did end up just grabbing an angle grinder. And uh, you guys can see the cut that I made right there for the header to be able to fit a little more smoothly. So. If you're using an angle grinder down there, just be careful. Uh, it doesn't like to cut straight, or at least mine didn't like to cut straight, or maybe I just didn't cut it straight. A lot of options there. Now we are ready to get the header on. So like I said, killer bee header. I've already got the O2 sensor put up in here. Uh, these are a little bit annoying to install because over here where it connects up to the up pipe, the up pipe does like to get in the way, especially on this flange corner over here. So the up pipe does need to be bent out of the way a little bit. There is a flex pipe on it, so we are able to maneuver it around. But once the header's in, all we gotta do is fill it up with fluids and then we can start it. Well, and put the base map on it, but that's beside the point. So we ran into a small issue where the up pipe and the header didn't want to line up. Uh, you guys saw us beat the hell out of the front core support again with a hammer. We just had to to get the header to clear it. Um, I mean, I can't 
totally blame Perrin on that one because the it is a little bit of a tight fitment. Uh, but header to radiator fan clearance is a lot better with the Killer B than it was with the Perrin. So I did end up cut or I did end up trimming the radiator fan even more than it was before just to get clearance a lot farther away from that thing because I don't want anything to catch on fire. I don't want anything to melt. I want everything to operate as it should. But at this point, we're pretty much ready to fill it up with fluids. We have one more thing that we have to do and then it's like good to go. So what Matt and I had to do is uh, loosen the up pipe bracket for the turbo just to keep everything in place because we needed the turbo to rotate a little bit more just to get clearance on the up pipe and the header down there, good. But everything mates up pretty well now. So as you guys can see, we have our nice killer bee holy header down here, uh, made it up to our Grim Speed external wastegate up pipe. Uh, right about here, right in the middle of the course port is where we had to bash it and trim it just to get that collector from Killer B to clear it. Like it's still pretty tight. They're not touching, but just keep in mind that that's a pretty tight clearance for anyone else who's gonna be doing this. So up here, everything else is cleaned up. The last thing that is left to do is connect a line from here over to the external reservoir from Killer B. Batteries hooked up, all lines are cleaned up, all exhaust is hooked up at this point. So it's ready. It's ready to be started, you guys. But but this is where I let you guys down because we're not going to start the car in, the, in this video. We're going to start it in the next video. Sorry, we have to run errands to go get the fittings, the lines. I got to go pick up a couple fluids also to be able to start the car. So I'm going to be starting it today, but you guys are going to see that in the next video. I'll probably post a couple teaser clips up on Instagram or the Discord if any of you guys are on there. But that is where I am ending it today, you guys. This is just exhausting. Get it? Because it's we did all exhaust. We did the downpipe and the header. It's exhausting. It's punny. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's all I got for you guys on this one. So if you like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple. Um, name a color. Name Cyan. colors. More. Cyan. Shy Cheyenne? Sapphire. Uh, Aqua. Periwinkle. Tangerine. Any of those colors, whatever color macaroni. it turns. Macaroni. Maca macaroni. Macaroni. Whatever color it turns for you guys. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up one of these corners. No idea which one I'll put it in quite yet. But you don't want to miss out on that 05 STI going to the dyno, and you definitely don't want to miss out on the big six cylinder going to the 17 STI because as soon as this car comes off the dyno, that car is coming in the garage, and we're going to start assembling that EG33. I'm still waiting on the short block to come back, but you know what? It is what it is. But I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.